have to. All right. So my name is Zangam Sarkozy, um, the co-founder of MedSearch Zambia. Uh, MedSearch Zambia is a platform that we've created an application, we've created an application that is able to help you and I be able to find the nearest health facility, regardless of your location. You'll be able to know if you're not feeling well, which hospital you're able to go to. If you're looking for a medication, the MedSearch Zambia app helps you find uh, which pharmacy. So instead, <clears throat> if you're at the hospital and they prescribe medication for you, you will not be able now to move from one place to the other the application will be able to tell you where exactly you're able to find uh, Flagyl and where exactly you're able to find uh, Moxicillin and whether you need to have a prescription or not. So the MedSearch Zambia app helps you. And I think during the COVID-19, the third wave, when there was restrictions of moving up and down and people were afraid of moving up and down, the application really helped many people here in Lusaka because they were now able to know where they able to find uh, vitamin C, uh, where they able to find the amount of vitamin. The application was able to tell them this pharmacy has, and they were able to go, uh, reducing the risk of uh, being infected with COVID-19. Uh, smoking. So this week we've been looking at smoking and your health. We've talked about it. We've looked at what is the effect on our body we, we 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 have really exhausted it and the final message has been if you do smoke whether it is the cigarettes whether it is shisha our encouragement as health personnel is stop uh, it is difficult to quit but you have to quit because the end result the consequences of you not quitting is having many conditions one of them is uh, lung cancer which 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 is now increasing a long time ago a few people would have lung cancer but now we're seeing an increment here in africa of people dying uh people dying of covid uh, people dying of lung cancer apologies so yeah uh, if you just join then invite invite your friends tag them so that we can start within i promise will not take long within 20 minutes we're done if there are any questions please do ask in the comment section it is going to be as active interactive as possible hey so smoking and your health what do we need to know Thank you very much, Moana Vines. Really appreciate. Uh, okay. So who smokes? So in who smokes? In 2019, the Ministry of Health of Zambia stated that smoking uh, prevalence was 24% in men and 7.8 in women. If we go back uh, in the 90s, uh, 2001, 2010, we know the prevalence of wealth has always been high in men and in women it has always been low. But the shocking part is, if, if I remember very well, the prevalence in women was below 5% way below 5%, but now we're seeing an increase, an increase in the number of women who are now smoking, which is fear, uh, which, which is something that really is scary. What we're seeing now, women are also now joining the habit. And this is attributed to people going to the club and smoking uh, shisha, which it might look fun now. It might look cool, people, doing the pipe thing and you no know, excelling the, the 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 vapor and everything but they do not know what they're doing to their bodies hey yeah so the, the number of tobacco related deaths in zambia increased from an estimated 3000 per year in 1990 to 7142 per year in 2020 now you could see the increase from 3000 to 7000 that is like more 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 than more than 100% uh, 
increase in the number of people that were dying from 1990 to 2020. And we know if more data is released by the end of this year, I know we'll, 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 be, we'll be running to 8,000, 8,500, which is, which is really scary. Uh, really scary, 45 pay 100,000 people are dying. I would say 50 now, 55 per 100,000 people are dying because of uh, smoking related condition, which is not really good. Uh, who, why so harmful? So people who smoke already have at least one disease from smoking. Imagine just you smoking already, you, you will have one, one condition that you will have at the end of the year or at the end, during, during the period that you'll be smoking. It might be asthma, bronchitis, it might be lung cancer, like we'll look through, through the presentation. So already when you start smoking, be rest assured to say you are already, uh, you've, the prevalence of you having a condition related to smoking is high. You already have at least one condition that might kill you because of smoking. More than 20 million, if we have to compare it to America, more than 20 million Americans have died because of smoking since 1964, the time that Zambia got its independence. We've got 20 million Americans have already died, uh, including approximately 2.5 million deaths due to exposure to secondhand smoking. Now, this is something that is really scary. Imagine secondhand smoking are people that, if I'm in a club and someone is smoking, someone is doing shisha, uh, vapor, if I'm near them, the chances of me uh, getting one disease because of the smoke that they're going to be exhaling out is high. So most of the time we try to say, oh no, I'm with friends and they're smoking and I wasn't smoking. But at the end of the day, you're also at high risk of getting sick. Uh, like we've seen in America, 2.5 million people died due to exposure to second hand. Uh, 8.6 million people live with a serious illness caused by smoke. Now, this is why it is harmful. It might look so cool. And I think with the young generation of the young people, it might look cool to smoke. It might look good to do the shisha, chewing the tobacco. It might, you, you might look cool. But at the end of the day, you're looking cool to death. Uh, on average, smokers die 13 to 14 years earlier than non-smokers. So people who do not smoke have got a plus of 13 to 14 years more than those people who smoke, which is scary. So, Hey, 13 years is 13 years is long enough, and it's it's uh it's 13 years. That's like someone giving you you're on your deathbed, and someone gives you 13 more years. That is that is way that is more than what what one can ask for. Uh, so tobacco, what 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 is in this thing that we smoke? Shisha, cigarettes. The active ingredient is the tobacco. Now, one thing that we should know is that what people smoke, the tobacco that people smoke contains over 4,000 chemicals. Imagine just that when someone is smoking, that already contains 4,000 chemicals, uh, including 250 known to harm humans. It already contains 4,000 chemicals, and from those 4,000, 250 are harming your body. Over 20% of all deaths in USA are from tobacco, which is scary. 20% is a big number, really big number. And if we had to bring it to Africa, this, this is too much already. 20% people die because of smoking uh, tobacco. Uh, cigarette smoking causes an estimated 4,400, like I, like I mentioned. And then worldwide, approximately 10 million cigarettes are purchased a minute. So each and every minute, imagine 10 million cigarettes, like those, one, 10 million of them are sold. And 15 billion are sold each day. Now that is very scary. So like 15 billion is causing death to people already. Uh, it might look cool when you're smoking, but like we've said, you're looking cool and something is making you die, lead, uh, no, shortening your life here on earth. And an upward of 5 trillion are produced and used 
on an annual basis. So we are using about 15 million a day approximately and 5 trillion are produced and used on an annual basis. This is really bad for, for the world. If you really have to look at it, say, uh, and there is one person holding the stick. It might look cool, but that is how you look like, okay? So, what contains tobacco? Like I said earlier, cigarettes do contain tobacco, and like I've mentioned, in tobacco there are about 4,000 chemicals in it, and 250 uh, chemicals which are harmful to the body already in it. Menthol cigarettes, cigars, which people like, it, it looks so cool when someone is smoking cigars in movies and like, oh yeah, he looks cool, he looks like a boss and everything, but the more a person does that, the more harmful it is to their body. Uh, pipes, the shishas, it might look cool, like the lady there, it looks cool, everyone thinks you are, you are dope and everything, but at the end of the day, it is killing you. Uh, what are some of the active, like which toxic metals or uh, toxic chemicals are in it? So tobacco smoke, the smoke contains deadly mix of more than seven uh, chemicals. Hundreds are toxic, about 70 are known to cause cancer. Now like, okay, now we're going to start. Like this was the scary part, but the fun part. Already 70, 70 of the chemicals that are in that cigarette are carcinogenic they are already causing cancer to you. So as you start smoking, even just from that one, 70, 70 of the chemicals are already carcinogenic. Uh, one of them, which I know, one of the poisonous gases is carbon monoxide. I think we've watched movies where someone goes on to inhale carbon monoxide and people do die, which is bad, even beyond 10. Uh, one of the cancer causing chemicals is benzene. Like I've said, it looks cool, but these are the chemicals in the cigarettes, in the shishas that we have. It might look cool, but if we go into depth, this is what we are allowing in our body when we smoke. Or this is what someone, our friend, our, our family member, this is what they are in putting in their body when they are smoking. Uh, it's toxic. That's, that, 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 that is important. It is toxic, it isn't good for a body. And we as made say to continue talking about it. Quit. Quit smoking, hey. One of the compound or component in the tobacco is nicotine. Now Nicotine, when you use tobacco products, nicotine is quickly absorbed in your body stream. So when people inhale, one of the components that are inhaling in their body is nicotine. And within 10 seconds of it entering your body, not even, we're not talk, talking about 30 or 50, we're talking about within 10 seconds, the nicotine reaches your brain. That's how that's how toxic it is like you 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 take in something and within 10 seconds already in your in your brain uh when it goes to your brain it causes the brain to release adrenaline which at the end of the day goes on to create that that buzz and the pleasure and energy uh that is what adrenaline does to your body and that is what nicotine is doing to you the effects of nicotine nicotine affects almost every organ system in the body when you just puff one imagine one of them is your brain one other part is your your lungs so what happens when you inhale that smoke one the smoke goes to your heart your heart starts to beat fast because of the same increase in adrenaline veins constrict blood pressure increases and we have, we have observed this that majority of the people who are chain smokers they will always they will always have hypertension they will always have a cardiovascular problem uh, adrenal glands pump out adrenaline smooth mu smooth muscles relax metabolic rate increases even electric electrical activity in the brain changes and you see when people who always smoke they, they've just got this weird behavior it's because of the same nicotine in, in their body uh nicotine is a powerful drug it is one of the most toxic uh, compared to cyanide if you take enough of it it will kill you 
Each, cigar each cigarette, like one of them, contains eight to nine milligrams of nicotine, which is way below, which is way, 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 way too much for your body. However, the amount of nicotine inhaled from each cigarette is only about 1.5 milligrams. Yeah. The amount of nicotine inhaled can be higher or lower depending on the type of cigarette or how deeply you inhale. And this is the funny part. You know, you, you, you watch people, I've seen youths, a lot of them on TikTok, I've seen them on Facebook, they'll inhale and they'll deeply hold that smoke in their body, making it look fashion, let, like, it may, it may look fashionable, but it's killing you. I don't understand. However, nicotine is so potent that even a small dose causes significant changes in the function of numerous organ systems in your body, which is very important. Just a small dose goes on to change, goes on to affect your brain, your heart. When you first start smoking, these changes are general and pleasant, but at the end of the day, it is the dopamine. So dopamine is a chemical in the brain that gives a feeling of pleasure and calm. So when you smoke, when the nicotine goes to your brain, it, it, it helps increase the release of dopamine. Now, when dopamine is released in your brain, it gives people that feeling of their high, calm, like they're just somewhere, somewhere, you know? And then between cigarettes, so when one person stops inhaling, the level of dopamine goes down. So no wonder you'll see people start getting crabby and jumpy, agitated, like they they have to they have to puff, they have to inhale again for them to maintain that high dopamine that they had that had already started being produced in the brain because of the nicotine. So your brain craves nicotine to release more dopamine to bring it back to a level of pleasure and calmness. That is why you see when someone stops smoking, they'll start, they'll just become agitated. They, and the shocking part is as time goes on, if I was smoking like two per day, as the brain continues releasing it and the receptors in the body start craving for more, I now start moving from two to three to five to even 10 per day. And at the end of the day, this is killing people, hey? Why is it so hard to quit smoking? The effects of nicotine from cigarette smoking is that nicotine is ad addictive. That is one thing uh, I would not like to you. Nicotine is very addictive. Uh, it is more like people who eat chocolate. It is addictive. Uh, it has got a stimulating and calming effect at the same time, it depresses appetite, which may interfere with good nutrition. If you've observed people who smoke a lot, <clears throat> I, 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 I know, at school some people would say, you know what, just smoke, uh, when you smoke you have appetite. <laughs> no, it depresses people, people lose appetite and the majority of them, if you've observed, majority of people who smoke look malnourished. Eh? Uh, so what are the risks of smoking and the benefits of why we're telling you to quit smoking? Uh, respiratory health. So nearly 9 out of 10 lung cancers, which is, which is, which is, which is very, if you just think about it, eh? 9 out of 10 lung cancers are caused by smoking. And smokers today are much, much more likely to develop lung cancer than smokers were in 1964. And this is because majority of the companies that produce cigarettes have increased the amount of nicotine in the cigarettes. So they want you to get as high as soon as possible and it, you just become addicted to it. I think the way people used to smoke a long time ago and the way people are smoking right now is different. And imagine 9 out of the 10 cancers that affect the lung are caused due to smoking. And this is a, this is, this is, this is a cry out to, to youths. You, like I've said, it might look cool, but you are at a high, you are susceptible of having 9 out of 10 cancers. Uh, more than 11% of high school students in the United States have got asthma and studies suggest that youths who smoke are more likely to develop asthma. And I've seen this, majority of the people that are, that, that are, that are trying to quit smoking, majority of the people who come to the pharmacies 
they've got this problem they've got the asthma problem and now this is secondary asthma because they got it due to an external factor which is smoking so you might be smoking at the end of the day at the end of your period here on earth you will at the end of the day end up with asthma and to make matters worse is that people who people who are asthmatic are also smoking so you're already asthmatic and now you're also smoking and contributing to you now having asthma uh, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death among men and women in the United States and 90% of lung cancer deaths among men and approximately 80% of lung cancer deaths among women due to smoking. These are, these are statistics that if someone is sharing to you, it should really deter you from, 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 from smoking. Uh, yeah. Uh, cancer. So smoking causes many other types of cancer, including cancer of the throat. So it's not only the lungs. So my, most of the people will say, do you know what? It's only causing cancer, cancer in the lungs. But smoking causes cancer of the throat, mouth, nasal cavity, esophagus, stomach, pancreas, kidney, blood. It's like the whole body, as well as acute myeloid leukemia. This is a condition that a long time ago here in Africa, we couldn't we never used to have them, but because of people now, the habit of people smoking, we are seeing an increment, which is which is sad. Uh, men with prostate cancer who smoke may may more likely to die from the disease than non-smokers. Yes, the, the, the chemicals such as time, most tobacco products actually directly damage the lungs. Yes. Heart attack and smoke. heart attack and smoke so why should you why should you stop smoking let's talk about the cardiovascular uh, effect of smoking so a smoker a smoker's chance of dying from a heart attack is two to three times greater than that of a non-smoker as a medical personnel this is scary and if you're watching if you know anyone who smokes I like who said tag them a smoker's chance of dying from a heart attack is two to three times greater than that of a non-smoker. Uh, about one in four heart attacks is believed directly related to smoking. And this was a study that was done in USA. And imagine one out of the four heart attacks that people would have is because of people smoking. When a smoker who has a heart attack, the risk of sudden death is twice that of a non-smoker. It's more like things don't even get better. So already we're saying you stand two to three chances of you having a heart attack if you smoke. And if you go on to have a heart attack, you have twice the chances of you dying out of that heart attack. Uh, smoking is much <clears throat> is a much higher risk factor for heart attack or stroke than higher cholesterol, obesity, high blood pressure or stress. And imagine most of the time we tell people you at the end of the day your stroke was because of your cholesterol obesity now these are put aside these are like lifestyle uh, behaviors these are put aside and smoking tops all of them which is scary uh i'll try, i'll have to bring on board someone i think he's he's online yeah uh, i have to bring on board uh, Dr. Mata, I think I've seen his online. Hope you're not in a noisy place, like we're, we're able. So why should people quit smoking? People who quit smoking before age 50 reduce the risk of dying by half in the next 15 years. These are, these are, these are, why should you stop smoking? If you, if you're going to stop smoking before the age of 40, I will say the chances of you dying uh, the chances of you dying reduces by 15 years, which is which is good. And people who stop smoking, we now tell them to have a better lifestyle, try to eat properly, try to do some exercise so that their bodies are better. Quitting before the age of 35 can almost reverse all risk of smoking. So to people, especially to, especially to the young people, if you're less than 35, this is 
I hope I hope you find time to watch this. This is chance for you to stop smoking before the age of 35. Because if you stop smoking before the age of 35, you reduce the chances of you having a heart attack at all. Uh, if you already have coronary artery disease, you risk of a second heart attack. And we continue saying if you go on to have a second third heart attack, it's like your your heart is just giving up, and chances of you surviving as you go on uh, are less. Uh, if you already have, yeah, it decreases when you quit smoking. So at the end of the day, continue smoking. Chances of you having a heart attack are very high. Continue inhaling the shisha. Chances of you having a heart attack are very high. And we have seen a long time ago cardiovascular problems, cardiovascular conditions, we couldn't see them in young people. But nowadays we are seeing this in in young people, which is which is scary. And one of them is lifestyle. And when we talk about lifestyle, it is the same, smoking. Uh, coronary uh, artery disease, smoking causes platelets to, to clump with a high risk to form clots, uh, can cause spasm in the coronary artery, which can reduce blood flow to the heart and all these are leading to heart disease. Uh, smoking causes irregular heartbeats causing arrhythmias which and these are conditions that if you go on to have uh, there are conditions why most of the time it is a heart transplant. Now having a heart transplant at the moment is really expensive and more people are going to other countries like India which is very expensive for people to do. So smoking at the end of the day does nothing good to your blood, does nothing good to your heart. And these are important. The heart is an important organ in your body and you're already damaging it because of smoking. After your first year of not smoking, your risk of heart disease decreases by half. So if I if someone started smoking this year and you quit, you your chances of having not having any uh, heart related condition reduces. So if this was the first time, this was your first time smoking this year in 2021, our encouragement has made such as quit smoking. Uh, I'll talk about what you can do when you want to quit smoking. After 15 years of not smoking, your risk of death from heart disease is the same as you have never smoked at all. After 15 years of not smoking, your risk of death from heart disease. So if you go on to abstain or stay away from smoking for almost 15 years, you give chance to your body to recover more like a person who has never smoked before. And this is good news. Treating cardiovascular condition is really, it's, ex it's expensive to start with. People who are who are susceptible to heart attacks, really expensive. Yeah, let me send you the Zoom link. Sorry, I have to bring in Dr. Mata. <laughs> So, thank you, friend. Let them come on board. It's it's really it's really interesting. Sorry, I have to do this. Apologies, I have to bring on board Dr. Matawa. No.
like I said, you can invite friends, let them come on board as we discuss. Apologies, like I have to bring on board my partner. Hope you'll be able to join soon. Okay. So that is it with the uh, smoking and your heart. Uh and then the shocking part that that we've observed, especially to teenage mothers, uh, mothers who are below the age of 30, we have seen majority of them uh, smoking while they're pregnant, majority of young women are drinking alcohol when they're pregnant. Uh, I, I honestly do not even know where we, we where this where this has come like where this has come from it is shocking to start with uh women who smoke uh who smoke are more likely to have the following problems number one stillbirth yeah number one stillbirth number two miscarriages low birth weight and if you go on to have a child and we have seen this in that majority of the women that go on to go on to deliver, they will have the child will have low birth weight. Children who have children who go on to have a learning, emotional and uh, behavioral problems, and this has been shown in majority of them. Uh, many studies have shown that majority of them who having a, who have a learning disability will have an emotional just an emotional a problem when they grow up or as they are growing up so it might it might look fun and i know most of the time people people will try to justify and say look i can go on and uh i can go on and smoke it's okay but it isn't okay to smoke while you're pregnant if you quit smoking before you become pregnant or sometime during the first three months that is the first trimester yeah, Dr. Mata is here. Hi, everyone. Sorry for Hi. joining late. Zanga for us having some connectivity issues. No problem. So, well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at women. There's a problem that we've seen in majority, majority of the young women, like especially those who are below the age of 30. And I don't know where the behavior came from, where people are smoking while they're pregnant. Like it is fashion for majority of them. It is a behavior that we never used to see in Africa, but now we are seeing it in Africa now where a woman is pregnant and they're smoking and they're drinking. I don't know if you have got anything to say about that. It's, it's fashion for them. <laughs> we can laugh about it, but. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where I think like, like you've been saying all along, um, smoking is, it's always been one of those things that has been marketed. Smoking has for a very long time was very aggressively marketed as being fashionable. It was cool to smoke. If, you, if you're like me and you like watching old movies, you find that everyone in, in movies smokes and we, we copy what we see. In, in, in public media, we copy what our celebrities are doing. So if I am watching TV, I'm watching Zambian music and I'm seeing uh, my musicians, my, my influencers, they're smoking and I'm a young person, I want to be like them. So I am going to smoke. 
because I want to fit in with what everyone else is doing. And, and like you've been saying, not realizing all the harmful effects that uh, tobacco and, and smoking actually has. Smoking is one of those things. For a lot of other substances, there's always a point where you can say, okay, maybe if I do a little bit of red wine, it would be good for my heart. But smoking is one of those things where there's absolutely no benefit to be gotten from, from smoking at all. And all you're putting yourself at risk of is all the complications. If you're a pregnant woman, a breastfeeding woman, you're putting your baby at risk, you're putting yourself at risk, you're shortening your lifespan, you're going to have a, increase the risk of you having a complicated pregnancy. So it's really one of those really, really harmful habits. And like, like you said, smoking, the, the chemicals in in cigarettes, nicotine is one of the most addictive substances out there and it doesn't take a long time for you to become addicted to, to, to smoking. So I, I agree with you completely. Smoking is one of those habits that really no one should be doing. Uh, one, thing that, one thing that I've observed, uh, I think everyone has observed, a majority of the people who smoke look malnourished sorry to say this and one of the reasons is smoking drains the body of essential vitamins and minerals and blocks absorption of these vital nutrients where someone will just start looking pale someone will start losing hair they will just look more like a mad person for lack of better term sorry but i've there there are people there are people in other countries when they when they smoke they might try to feed look look better but when it comes to africa and majority of the youths when someone when your sibling or someone that you're keeping your cousin when they just start smoking even even when they were looking smart within a short period of time someone will just start looking dirty malnourished more like they don't eat and like we've said it goes on to affect their appetite but this is this is some of the effects of smoking on someone who are on someone who who people effects of smoking on someone's health you start looking sick malnourished i don't know if you've got anything to say on that yeah i think a lot of that is to do with just the fact that it is an addiction and like most addictions um people begin to neglect a lot of other aspects of their, their personal care. So personal hygiene sometimes goes down the, down the line. One of the, the, the images that, that we've been posting during the week was of what uh, tobacco does to your teeth. So you notice that you begin to have these physical changes. Your, a smoker's lips will, will, will darken, their gums will start to recede, their teeth will get yellow. Uh, for people who smoke a lot, they begin to have this tobacco smell wherever they are going. You can tell a smoker just as they're entering the room. And eventually, if you are smoking, it's highly likely that if you are abusing tobacco, you are going to abuse other substances. So a lot of smokers tend to abuse things like alcohol. If they smoke tobacco, the risk of them smoking other substances like marijuana or other inhaled um, uh, drugs also increases. And you find that it's a very slippery slope. So once you go down that route, uh, it's like it's a gateway to other substances and that can lead to poor nutrition. Poor nutrition leads to just general poor health. And that's when you start to see people who are really struggling functionally and it's, it all starts with potentially just from, from smoking. The other part that people don't realize is the secondhand smokers, and those are the people around us. Uh, we have, like we've said, you know, majority of them are youths. Yeah, you're smoking in front of your siblings. If you're parents, you're smoking in front of your children. As much as you think the harm is only being done to you, but even the people around you, the chances of them having cancers, like the cancers that we've talked about, the lung cancers, uh, throat cancers, that we've yeah. talked about heart disease, chances of them having it also increase 
especially for babies whose parents who smoke are more likely to have ear infection, pneumonia and bronchitis in the first years in their lives and we go, we go on to say we don't know where the child got this uh, pneumonia from, we don't know where the child got the bronchitis from but we have to look at the lifestyle, these are people who get affected because of the behaviours of other people Yeah, and, and it's it's a twofold effect, right? So if you are close to someone who's smoking, you are also smoking. So all the complications, some some studies have actually shown that um, if if you are standing next to someone who is smoking, you are more at risk because at least they have a filter. Some of the, the cigarettes now come with filters, which yeah, take out yes. some of the chemicals. That's, that's, that's still getting that because they are smoking directly. But you, as a secondary smoker, you, you don't have a filter. So you are just inhaling everything that's coming out from that cigarette. So that's one aspect. So imagine now you're a child and you've been living in a household where the, your parents have been smoking. You have also been smoking. So you're going to get all the complications of that. But the other aspect of secondary smoking is, especially for children and, and young adults, is we mirror ourselves on what we see around. So if my parents or my siblings smoke in the home, then I am more likely to also develop smoking as a habit as, as I go. Maybe they even send me, hey, go and buy these cigarettes. And when I buy one for them, I also buy one for myself and I start smoking earlier. So children of smokers are much more likely to smoke themselves as they grow up. And like what we've been talking about, why should you stop smoking? Uh, reduced heart disease, reduced chances of you having bronchitis, reduced chances of you having lung cancer, stomach cancer, esophagus cancer, even throat cancer. And these are images that you're able to see. Uh, this is a lung of someone of a normal, this is like, I know the picture is not clear, but this is a normal lung. Then now we're looking at someone who's been smoking for a while. That is how their lung is looking. <sighs> sometimes I feel like, you know, <laughs> not like, say, sometimes I feel like maybe we can, people who smoke should have a transparent chest so that they're able to see how, how, how their lungs are dying. Maybe the teeth, uh, something that they're saying, look, doesn't matter so long as I'm okay, my teeth, it's okay. But we're talking about someone's lungs, hey? Eh? Yeah, yeah. I know, I know there's some scary images of people who are not in the field, they'll, they'll, they'll see that black lung, but that is the, the reality of, of what smoking does to your whole body, all the way from your mouth, your teeth down into your lungs. It's, it's not. Pretty. Yeah. And all of this can be can be prevented by just not smoking or even if you have smoked like you said earlier if you've been smoking uh, just giving up smoking can potentially reverse a lot of this so it, it's very important that we all think about if we are smokers that we think about um, stopping smoking the sooner the better one thing that people <sighs> for you to stop smoking it is not like you're just going to wake up and say Do you know what today i stop smoking it is a process and most of the time we tell people to seek help uh we have a thrive awareness hub on our on our platform and this is they help people deal with addiction and one of them is smoking and alcohol but today we're focusing on smoking one of the things that they tell people is you have to make a commitment at least we've given you enough information now it is up to you to make a commitment to say look i'm quitting smoking because i want to have a better lifestyle and this is why i'm quitting smoking you're not stopping smoking because of other people this should be your personal commitment to stopping smoking because you want to have a better lifestyle yeah and, and we get that a lot don't we zanga where maybe a, a, a parent will bring a, a child to the hospital or a spouse to bring their partner to say no but doctor can you tell this this woman to stop smoking and, and and i tell my patients and and their their loved ones to say you know what i can only give you information 
of what this is doing to you and the benefits, more importantly, the benefits of you stopping to smoke. But the final decision, like you said, is yours. So if the person ha hasn't gotten to that point where they decide to say, you know what, I don't want to smoke anymore. How can you help me stop smoking? It becomes practically impossible. I can't tell you to smoke. Uh, you say yes <clears throat> well, while you're with me. And then you walk outside and you get a cigarette. So it starts with a decision and then we can help connect you to resources like Thrive Wellness Hub. And then they can take you through the techniques of how to get over addictions. And, and they do it much better than, than I would be able to. Yeah, so like what we've said, number one is preparing your mind and preparing your body. <clears throat> the, the best person to come up with the final decision is yourself. Like Dr. Mata said, we, we can, we're able to give you information, but the person has to make a final decision. And I, we're living in a time where information is vast on the internet. People are able to read. If they're not able to read, the first thing is we need to help someone's mindset be able to change. They need to know why they're quitting smoking. And then when they come to health facilities, when they come to see Dr. Mata, one thing that people do is nicotine gums that they're able to prescribe. There are some other lifestyle that we're able to tell a person that will help a person now be able to change their lifestyle and figure out what changes you can make in your own habits to help you avoid smoking. Stop being idle because the more you're idle, the more you're prone to just going back to smoking. Be proactive. Yeah. And, and, it's it's small steps right so if if i know that i want to give up smoking but all of my friends smoke if i continue to hang out in the same places with those same people then the risk of me going back to smoking is very high so if it means um avoiding some people for some time at least until Obviously, you have to, if, if they are truly your friends and have your interests at heart, they will, they will respect your decision and support you. But if they are the ones who are constantly pushing cigarettes on you, then those are possibly relationships you want to reevaluate. And Zanga, you mentioned like the nicotine gum. So there's nicotine gum, then nicotine patches, different ways of it's it's kind of a way of because this is an addiction your body has gotten used to having nicotine in the system so we want to kind of slowly wean you off kind of get the nicotine out of your system gradually so we, we deliver it in different ways instead of cigarettes so you can do patches you can do gum and obviously it's a lot of um uh, behavior modification which is where uh, facilities like the thrive wellness hub which is on the message app really comes in help very useful at the end of the day our, our 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 presentation has really been you need to stop smoking like i think most of the time we we try to quote it but you need to stop smoking you will die no that is the worst <laughs> that is not the right way to encourage people but you need to stop smoking and you need to the first step that you can take is write down reasons why you want to stop smoking because that will now help you you know i want to stop smoking because i want to have i want to stay healthy for my family but the first thing is i want to stay healthy for myself i want to stay healthy for the people around me i want to reduce my risk of getting cancer i want to set an example if you're a parent you need to set a good example to your children because this is a behavior that they're able to see through you and we have seen families where the great great grandfather was smoking the father was smoking even children at the end of the day start smoking and yet yet again if those going to have children it will be a chain you need to set a good example you need to stop smoking smoking is bad for you and this has been our presentation the effects of smoking on your health i'll stop sharing then i'll bring in dr mata yeah so i couldn't agree more i think uh it's it's all of us out there and i think in in countries where you've seen reduction in smoking 
there have also been very deliberate policies. Uh, some time back, we got to a point where we said, there's this, I think there's even a statutory instrument that had banned smoking in public places, but without enforcement, then nothing happens. So you have to be very strict. There have to be laws protecting children, protecting, I should not be able to, if I'm a child, I should not be able to walk into a shop and buy cigarettes. I just should not be allowed. Uh, smoking in public places should not be allowed. So once you have these laws and, and, and consequences to smoking, and then on the other side, you also give support systems for people who are trying to, to give up smoking. You, you give them resources, you give them information, which is where we come in with MedSearch. We share information and other healthcare providers share information. And then we link you to, to, to facilities that can help you quit because we all want, we want the best for you. We want you to be healthy. We would love as healthcare workers, we would love it if one day we showed up for work and we didn't have any patients. That would be a great day for us. <laughs> we'll be out everyone. of job. We won't have Healthy. anyone to work. <laughs> it's okay. Because people would be healthy. So <laughs> I'd be willing to sacrifice if everyone was healthy. I'd, I'd look for another job. And people stop using the meds exam they are paying. Uh, okay, now nah, yeah, right. You're right. Uh, no, we can advise them in, in ways of staying healthy. Once they get healthy, we'll continue how to stay healthy. And uh, this is where we come to, to the end of our presentation. One thing: if you have a family member or you have a friend who is struggling with uh, addiction to smoking, who's been smoking too much, and you you want them to have help. Uh, download the MedSearch Zambia app on either Google Play Store or App Store, that is your Android or iOS, and make an appointment with one of the facilities, one of our partnering uh, facilities on the app is Thrive Awareness Hub, and they'll be able to help you. We as MedSearch Zambia, we will continue with the awareness about smoking and its effects on your body, but you need to take a step. Our message is stop smoking. Smoking is bad for you. That is our message. I'll bring in Dr. Mata for his final words. Well, you, you've said it. Um, download the Message Zambia app. It's free to download. We really want to get people using the app to find ways of accessing health services very easily, very quickly. And, and our what we say we are health simplified and we think it's about information it starts with information but also acting on the information and that's what we're here to help to achieve as message them yeah like you said we always say healthcare simplified and we we're open now to you uh at least now because of technology and less uh, of our daily work we hope to be having such interactive uh, uh, live videos with you so if there is a topic that you feel like we need to share as made such zambia we have our partners who are coming on board to have an input and we'll be able to share it with you share our page with your friends let them like tell them to download the message zambia app remember our aim as made such zambia app is to simplify access to health information this is why we're providing this platform. And if you own a pharmacy or hospital and you want to increase your visibility to more clients, the MedSearch Zambia platform is the place to be. Come and subscribe with us. Like we always say, MedSearch Zambia Healthcare Simplify. Till next time. Bye, everyone.